have been friends for a hundred years, and uh, so sometimes there's a, a little bit of orneriness that goes on between us, but here's, I got kind of ornery to God, so I woke up uh, Saturday morning, and I said, well, you know, Deanne got to go to the vault, and I, I, I didn't, I don't even see no, I, she told me about it, and I, I am, um, I, I can see things, and so as she told it to me, I could see the vault, I could see the deal, and, uh, but, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't my experience, and so I said, God, can I go into the vault? Here's what happened. I haven't even told Deanne this. I asked to go to the vault, and he, no, 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 and so here, here's what happened. So I went to a very a, a big building, and the and the and the big building had these old fashioned I don't even know how to explain them but real thick heavy wooden doors with the with the hardware on them that made it it made it look kind of like a a, a castle type of thing although it wasn't a castle and it was in heaven it was a big building with those big doors and then but ab above the door uh, was like an area where there was a, a writing you know up above that door as if to say that's what's inside this building and so I I'm at the I'm at this building I'm at these big doors and I look at that and I kind of look again at what's inside the building and the word on this uh, plaque above the double doors was expectations and they haven't come into the earth realm yet so here's what he said to come here today and say tell my people, that I don't want them to go into this new season, this new era, this new age, being insulted with circumstances, with a poverty spirit, and the greatest insult would be being convinced that you're going to go into this new age, this new season, this new era, and there will be no great expectations. Nothing new is going to happen. I can't even risk hoping again because I've got hope deferred going on in my life. It's really nothing New. It's really nothing unheard of. It's really nothing uncommon. It's really nothing unprecedented. It's just the old redone again. So you're just thinking little. A little healing. A little financial breakthrough. A little help. A little, a little breakthrough. But God's word is full of promises that are huge and big. And they're up there in a heavenly realm. God God wants us to walk through those doors and bring heaven into earth in the form of expectations. So then I thought, when I was growing up completely and utterly Baptist, we had what we called a little promise box. And it looked like a loaf of bread because after all, Bread of life. Bread of life. Bread and of there was the little promises. And they were, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I, they just called it one. a promise. Yeah, we all had Even one. as Episcopalians. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we had one. And, and sometimes it was on the kitchen table. And sometimes it was on the, the counter there. And so here's what would happen. I just remember that we would just randomly draw one of the, we'd take turns, randomly draw those out. But it really wouldn't be, if we didn't know to do this, it really wouldn't be something that we would believe or that we would apply or that we would make a declaration. We just read it. And then I got, I got to thinking about that, and then I got to thinking about this 
place that we are right now. And I thought, for heaven's sakes, God didn't send his son to live on the earth and to teach and to cast out devils and to heal the sick and demonstrate the kingdom and die for our sins and go to hell and get the keys to that thing, ascend to heaven and send the Holy Spirit to the earth and on the inside of me so I would live with such low expectations that they've been piling up in front of those big, uh, inside of those doors, like a vault. No. Jesus, now uh, uh, this is happening to me in my room yesterday. No, Jesus came so we could live every day in some kind of life Changing power and joy and peace and prosperity and be where we're recreating with him. So do we expect that? Remember expectations is up there on that big building. Big building, big doors. Shut. That's what's in there. So how in the world do we get those the doors open I just felt like if we could get the doors open to these big great expectations and here's what God says yesterday when your vision is lifted when your vision is lifted see that's what happened to Deanne Sitting in there, she's prayed for the government as long as I've known her. When your vision gets lifted, listen to me, expectations are shifted from heaven to earth. When your vision is lifted, expectations are shifted. When your vision is lifted, so here's what I do, because I'm just a word bird, so I go to Acts chapter 3. Listen to it. Now, Peter and John went to the temple at the hour of prayer, and a certain man, say certain man, a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried daily to the temple gate to ask alms of those That was going to enter the temple. Who seeing Peter and John ask alms of them. Peter looking at this man said look at us. And and the man gave heed to them. He looked at them expecting. Say expecting. He did expect to receive something of them. Listen I'm telling you our expectation. Our expectations are going to bring something new on us. So new on us we cannot even believe. He had no idea. He was lame from birth. It wasn't even his own fault. He is is born into this. He's born into the addiction. He's born into the abuse. He's born into that physical malady. And yet the expectation that he had was that he would get a little bit of money so he would have food for that. That evening, he had no idea what was going to happen. But two vision lifters showed up on his path. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and walked. And then his faith, Joe, his faith took that Lame man, some commentaries say he was 40 years old, took that lame man by the right hand, lifted him up, and immediately he received his strength. Listen, I got some expectations up there in that building along that line. He leaped up, he stood, he walked, he went with him. If you've been saved for five minutes, you know the story in Acts chapter 3. The, the man was lame from birth. So he was born into this, born into poverty, born into corruption, born into addiction, born into all that. And all the higher his vision was, was could you just give me a few coins? We see it. We see it almost every day. It's obvious. They're born lame. And because of those kinds of situations, that man had 
Low vision. The man's vision at the gate was just to get his next need met. Then those two vision lifters entered the scene and said, look up. It's like Deanne said, I'm very powerful. And when I pray, God answers my prayers. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. That lame man didn't know that that day two vision lifters were going to be on his path. He didn't know that when he sat there, something was going to happen. And then I remember when Deanne and I, Deanne, you don't remember this, but I'll tell you what, it's just pretty amazing when you get in these heavenly encounters and you go off there and you go off there and I went back I went back to when you and I were in graduate school and here's what that uh, professor said he says where you sit determines what you see and what you see determines what you get tell your neighbor it's important where you sit uh -huh. where you sit determines what you see and what you see determines what you get and if you're not sitting in the right place of vision lifters, mm -hmm, perhaps you should move. The Acts 3 man was radically, radically changed forever from his birth because of where he sat. It's important where we sat. I'm not just talking about church because you know what? You can sit in front of your computer. You can sit in front of your phone. You can sit in front of the TV. There's so many places you can sit. And I'll just add addendum to what Deanne said. Before Jesus, they went to the temple. But after Jesus, they were the temple. Do you get what I'm saying? That man didn't have to go to the temple to get healed. <laughs> the vision lifters met him on the outside. Listen, you and I don't have to go very far to find some lame people, if you know what I'm saying. And we can lift their vision. Expectation. This is why I believe that building up there had that that sign on it expectation determines manifestation so we need to we need to for our personal self we need to put ourselves in the path of vision lifters i think that's what you're saying joe that when you showed up here 3 years ago and even though it was so different from what you were used to or perhaps something was being presented that you did not understand or you did not get you cut you were placing yourself you didn't know it at the time in the path of vision lifters because your vision got lifted over those three years so that you could stand here this morning and give the word of the Lord so say this with me. I said in the presence of vision lifters. I will stand up in places that I have never stood before. I will walk and leap and praise God. I am a vision lifter. I will help people see beyond they're lame. <laughs>